Now this picture right here, I have done, and we'll get back to the front, the big one here. Uh, I did a series of paintings that are based on uh, the letters that Edgar Degas wrote to, uh, when he visited uh, uh, New Orleans uh, in 1872-73, came here for a four month visit. Uh, his mother was from here and his um, uncle, Michel Mousson, lived on Esplanade Avenue and he stayed with them. Uh, the, the house is still there, uh, it's been divided in half, but there's now a little, really neat little museum I went to a couple of, couple of weeks ago that they have. And um, anyway, to make a long story short, uh, or longer, um, uh, I had, uh, was, and my friend Nancy called me up one day, she was up in New York, she said, Holiday Magazine, uh, uh, what is it called, American Heritage Magazine wants me to write an article about uh, Degas' visit to New Orleans vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, uh, the painting he did in uh, his, the major work at the time uh, it was called Portraits in the Cotton Office and it's an interior uh, scene of his uncle's cotton business on uh, Perdido and Carondelet Street and uh, they, they're running a picture of that uh, painting and, and an issue they're doing on American journalism. I can't do it. Could you do it? Could you read the Picayune for four months at the time that Degas was here, see? So I said, yeah, it's a great idea, and they'll pay me, right? So I went down to the, uh, the, the uh, newspaper, I think it was either the historic collection or the um, historic collection of the, of the library, I forget which, and I read the Picayune from December of 1872 when he got here, late, uh, early winter, all the way through March, and I wrote a little article about what he was, what, uh, what was going on because his, his brother is depicted in the painting reading the Picayune, right? Well, it's an, it was an interesting experience because um, uh, uh, I had uh, the letters, I also had the letters uh, of Edgar Degas. I had a little book by um, Edith Marcel Garin of uh, the letters of Edgar Degas. The first several letters in the book are written from New Orleans. So what I did was to contrast what Degas said in his letters about an event and what the Picayune said about the event, right? And sometimes they're kind of mutually exclusive, but it was this, you know, I sort of did that compare and contrast kind of thing, you know? Well, anyway, I said, you know, this, this, is, this experience is too, more, it's too good to, 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 to uh, ignore. I said, maybe I should turn them into paintings. Well, there was one thing, though, that I, I was, didn't know this at the time, but I was doing some really good art, uh, architectural, I mean, excuse me, art history research, because I found out why his brother is reading the Picayune in that painting. In 1873, there's an article in the Picayune that describes, um, there, was very, there was political chaos in, in Louisiana at the time. Michel Mousson was a member of the Fusion Democratic ticket. He wasn't on the ticket, but he was one of the people that was heavily involved in the politics of the time. And they were running Beauregard and all these reform candidates, and they needed, an, uh, they needed a newspaper to act as their uh, um, you know, propaganda sheet. So, so guess what? In the Picayune, it lists, he said, the Picayune has been bought by this group of businessmen. And it lists the businessmen. And one of the businessmen that owns the Picayune at that time has just bought it, is the firm of, uh, of um, Mousson, Prestige, and Liverday, which is his uncle's cotton factor's office, right? That's why he's reading the Picayune, his brother's reading the Picayune in the picture, is because his uncle owns it at the time. So it's a sort of a pay-in to, to his family's success in New Orleans, plus the fact that the cotton exchange had just been organized, and his brother, Rene, was on the statistics committee. And the cotton statistics were reported in the Picayune. That was the, the organ that they used to report the cotton statistics. So what he's looking at in the Picayune is the cotton statistics, you see. So, uh, and that's art history, that's not art. But uh, I was very pleased with that. Well, anyway, it inspired, me. The, whole, the whole experience inspired me to do a series of pictures about Degas' visit to New Orleans. Uh, the, the, well, well, we'll get to the, the, ma the major work. But this picture right here, there's a photograph of Edgar Degas that was made, they think, in New Orleans. It was in the frontispiece of a catalog of, of a Degas show back, and that was given to the New Orleans Museum of Art back in the early 60s. And he's posed against a backdrop, right? Now, okay, a cotton backdrop, like a canvas backdrop, it's a very informal picture. 
Well, when I was, um, how can I, uh, uh, the phone rang. There was a friend of mine from the historic New Orleans collection, Dodi Plateau. She says, George, you've got to come see these drawings. The collection is just bought by Alfred Wode. I said, I'd love to come see them. And the beautifully drawn imagery of the city of New Orleans, it was done for Harper's Weekly, to be turned into, um, into woodcuts to illustrate New Orleans under reconstruction in Harper's Weekly. And Wode was a, uh, was, was called, well, he was a really great uh, draftsman. And uh, he, uh, he, he did, uh, you've seen Wode's work, uh, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the Civil War, because he did a lot of stuff for Harper's Weekly about the battles and stuff. Well, anyway, he was in New Orleans, almost the same time as Edgar Degas, right? And now Degas, in his letters, he says, there's a lot of things I'd love to paint here, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the ships at the end of the, with the big black smokestacks, meaning the steamboats at the end of the, at the Grand Boulevard, meaning Canal Street. He'd like to be drawing scenes on the levee, but he can't because his eyesight's deteriorating. He had macular degeneration. So he just mainly did scenes, you know, genre scenes. He didn't do outdoor stuff. Well, I go down and look at the, at the, the collections, collections of Wode's drawings, and what should I see but a picture that Wode did of a, it's called German Itinerant Photographer on New Orleans Levee. And I look at it, and then there are other pictures that he did on the New Orleans Levee. I said, well, this guy's doing the, the, the very drawings that Degas would have done if Degas' eyesight was better. Plus the fact that it explains that photograph. And I said, that's where he had that photograph taken. It was taken on the levee by that German itinerant photographer that Woe drew. So what I did, this is a painting of Degas having his photograph taken, that photograph I'm talking about, on the levee. And what I did was to use all of Wode's drawings of the characters that he did on the levee. So here's Wode, see, I put Wode here. Here's Wode doing his drawings of the, of the levee, right? And these are all, the whole, the whole picture is based on, on Wode's drawings. So, uh, you know, it's like what Picasso said. He said, good artists steal, bad artists copy. <laughs> so anyway, that's a, uh, this was, a, this was actually going to be a, uh, it was, I was in a contest uh, where they were going to do a, uh, uh, for the aquarium in New Orleans, they wanted artists to submit ideas for a big painting in the, in the aquarium. And I said, who wants to paint fish? Good Lord, what I'll do is paint the levee. I'll do a picture of the levee, of a, a cultural, a major cultural event happening on the levee. Degas having his photograph taken, probably in the same exact spot where the aquarium is today. Say it's the end of Canal Street. So, but they, they, they bought the drawing, but they didn't buy the, the idea, so uh, they got fish.